Hey there, I'm Amira Hall. 23 years ago, after I had my near-death experience and my whole life fell apart, I would have never seen the future in discovering clairvoyance. And so I tell you that because when my life completely fell apart, all I wanted to do was get out of my misery. And I started to understand, I received downloads from the other world. And I understood that energy was everything. And I was creating my experience, my failures, my successes by my energy. And so that's what brought me on the journey of learning and basically healing myself. I had no intentions of teaching this. Um, the joke is on me, I guess. So I have spent the last 23 years teaching other people how to tap into their intuition and understanding those deeper aspects to who you are, your clairvoyance. So I serve as a bridge into your exciting, bright future from a painful past. So we get to bridge all of the traumas and dramas and tap into our superpowers, which are God given to us. So if you like this topic, if you like this video, I would be so happy if you gave it a thumbs up. YouTube likes that. They will show it to more people and go ahead and subscribe. In discussing clairvoyance, a lot of people really don't understand the bigger meaning of what it is and what it involves. And I've always felt like I was intuitive, but I didn't understand the aspects to intuition. And this week earlier, I talked about the four different styles of our abilities. And today I'm just going to hone in on your clairvoyance. A lot of people feel things. The most common ability is that clear feeling. All you empaths out there, you rely heavily on that. And the challenge with that is that we feel things, but we're filtering it through our own emotional body. And so sometimes our experiences can jade or affect the accuracy of our perception. I believe that everybody's psychic. I believe everybody's clairvoyant. To the degrees that you're using it, perhaps is dependent on how much you're using or practicing it. Some of us have stronger aptitudes for various aspects, but imagine just close your eyes for a minute and just visualize your bedroom. Can you see it with, is the bed made? Is it left unmade? And, or do you got a pile of clothes in the corner that you've been meaning to hang up all week? Maybe there's some slippers in the room. Maybe you've got a stack of books on your night table. Just visualize that. And as you open your eyes, or even with your eyes open, you can see that that's tapping into your clairvoyance. Now, where this can be really helpful is as we refine it and use this ability, we can actually see truth in our life, truth about who we are and perhaps even what we want. And the third eye, you've probably heard of that or the pineal gland, which is located at more or less the center of the head. If you put your fingers here and then drop a line straight down, that's the point of what I call the center of the head where your pineal gland is. And the sixth chakra, this energy center and your pineal gland work together. And they are basically playing a role in how you see. Clairvoyance can also include clear knowing as well as the seeing or the visualization of what you're projecting. In terms of the law of attraction and what we're manifesting, I think the, the pinnacle point of you create what you visualize, right? Or you whatever you see, you create. And so that is why it's so critical in being able to know yourself and clear those energies that are competing with your own natural state of seeing. A lot of people are visual learners. Maybe when you're learning or studying, you like to see the pictures. You get stimulated and have a better understanding with a picture. Sometimes it's just reading rather than hearing you can absorb the information more. So it's almost like you're creating mental pictures as you're reading and taking in information. Clairvoyance can be where you have a flashing light on the side of you. Often my students tell me, gee, Amir, I, I felt like I was seeing something off in my vision, or maybe it's just a flash. A lot of my clients have been talking about seeing orbs, just these little balls of light and wondering what that is. With their eyes open, they go, well, that never happened before. And that's because they're developing their own ability to see. It's not that things didn't exist before. It's just that you didn't have the eyes to see. 
And so spirits and angels often approach us from the side, our deceased loved ones. I was talking to one of my students recently, and she was sharing how her deceased husband was sort of showing up, appearing as though he was on the other side of the fence. Every time she would sit in her car outside the office, she'd see his presence off in the distance. Some of them don't come in that close. So if you're wondering why you haven't had a connection with your loved one on the other side, sometimes it's just they're respecting your space and realizing they're watching you and you're starting to get a sense that they're there. In developing our clairvoyance, there's a number of techniques that I use. And one of the most important techniques is learning how to ground yourself and learning how to release energies that aren't yours. For instance, have you ever been up for, let's say, a job promotion, or you had to make a big decision in your life? Maybe it was a move, or maybe it's a career change. A lot of times what happens is, I remember I did this, I would call five different friends and tell them the situation and ask for their opinion. And what's happening is when you're doing that, literally, some of your friends' opinions or beliefs or ideas are coming into what I call the center of your head and your center of clairvoyance. And you're also leaving some of your energies or impressions in their energy field on their screen is what I call it. And so literally, that's like giving some of your power away. And little by little, with all these experiences throughout our life, whether you're asking your parents' opinion or a friend or a colleague, that's exactly what's happening. And eventually you don't trust your own opinions or you don't have an opinion on things. I see that a lot with people that can't formulate an opinion because there's too much of foreign energy that's competing with their own information. Now, there's various levels of clairvoyance. The very first level is is just a minimal depth, okay? And that's just a two-dimensional, like flat, like a piece of paper. This is flat. Now, as we develop, we get a 3D vision. So if you close your eyes and visualize your bedroom, you may see it in a 3D relationship. Then as we develop that, it becomes not only 3D, but it becomes like a movie, a video. That's how I see. Sometimes it's just colors. Sometimes I'll get an impression of the aura or the color. As we develop, we develop our own style. There's not an exact order. There's not an exact defining way to see. And I remember a student from Saudi and he did my clairvoyant training and then he was disappointed at the results after the 12 weeks. He was expecting that it should be like the way I see when I describe things and when we're talking. And what ended up happening, we waited a few weeks because even after 12 weeks, you're still in a process of of expanding. It's like a simmer, a a sweet sauce that's simmering. And all of a sudden he called me and he said, oh my gosh, Amira, I'm seeing my client's organs in their body. So it's almost like an MRI machine. That's really powerful. And a lot of times we can depict a story from an image or an impression. Our higher self will guide us in interpreting what that is. It's almost like an MRI, let's say, with the output or the report with the guidance on what's the step to take. Now above that, there's like fourth degree and fifth degree and sixth degree. And we're really not sure what that entails. All I know is I have holographic images from time to time and like 9-11, two weeks after the 9-11 situation, I sat down to ask who was involved with this and what was behind it. And I literally got a holographic impression of a boxing ring and the message I got that was an inside job. And quite honestly, to this day, I'm not sure that we can really comprehend. And that may trigger some of you in your belief system. All I know is I trust what I see. And that was the information I got. Did I need to go down the rabbit hole? Yeah, I've got more information on that, but we'll save it for another time. So in developing your clairvoyance and having seniority over this space, you develop a sense of peace and you also develop a higher sense of confidence and knowing things or being able to get information when you need it. You develop your confidence because you're taking back your power from giving it away when you're asking for other people's advice or opinions. It's really important to have a good clear sense of who we are as we develop our clairvoyance we are gaining a strength and knowing 
our purpose. So many people ask me, Amira, what's my purpose? Your purpose is to know yourself. Your purpose is to know and trust all of who you are and be able to access all of your superpowers, all of your super abilities. Yeah. So that's the power and the importance of developing your clairvoyance. I alluded to some tools that I teach. And next week, I'm offering a free masterclass. It's three parts. And we will dive into the tools of beginning to elevate and access your higher levels of intuition and being able to manifest what you want in life. We first have to clear the energy and then all of our superpowers and manifesting a higher level of confidence, a clarity, certainty, and being in line with what you're here to do is, is all what this is about. I hope you join me. If you like this video and this information, please like it and share it with more people. And I truly appreciate it. So thanks for joining me here and sign up for that training and get going. Even if you can't join the live training, you'll be able to access the replay. So I'll look forward to seeing you there. Just shine 